Bless, Master. Bless is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Come, let us worship God our King. Come, let us worship and fall down before Christ our King and our God. Come, let us worship and fall down before Christ himself, our King and our God. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are magnified exceedingly. You clothe yourself with thanksgiving and majesty, who cover yourself with light as with a garment, who stretch out the heavens like a curtain. You are he who covers his upper chambers with waters, who makes the clouds as means of approach, who walks on the wings of the winds, who makes his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. He has established the earth on its stable foundation. It shall not be moved unto ages of ages. The deep like a garment is his covering. The waters shall stand upon the mountains. At your rebuke they shall flee. At the sound of your thunder they shall be afraid. The mountains rise up and the plains sink down to the place you found it for them. You set a boundary they shall not pass over. Neither shall they return to cover the earth. You are he who sends springs into the valley. The waters shall pass between the mountains. They shall give drink to all the wild animals of the field. The wild asses will quench their thirst. The birds of heaven shall dwell beside them. They shall sing in the midst of the rocks. You are he who waters the mountains from his higher places. The earth shall be satisfied with the fruit of your works. You are he who causes grass to grow for the cattle and the green plant for the service of man to bring forth bread from the earth and wine gladdens the heart of man, to brighten his face with oil and bread strengthens man's heart. The trees of the plain shall be full of fruit, the cedars of Lebanon which you planted. There the sparrow shall make their nest, the house of the heron takes the lead among them. The high mountains are for the deer, the cliff is a refuge for the rabbits. He made the moon for seasons, the sun knows its setting. You established darkness and it was night, wherein all the wild animals of the forest will prowl about. The young lions roar and snatch their prey and seek their food from God. The sun arises and they are gathered together, and they shall be put to bed in their dens. Man shall go out to his work and to his labor until evening. O Lord, your work shall be magnified greatly. You made all things in wisdom. The earth was filled with your creation. There is this great and spacious sea. The creeping things are there without number. The living things are there, both small and great. There the ships pass through, there is a dragon you formed to play therein. All things wait upon you that you may give them food in due season. When you give it to them, they shall gather it. When you open your hand, all things shall be filled with your goodness. But when you turn your face away, they shall be troubled. When you take away their breath, they shall die and return again to their dust. You shall send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let the glory of the Lord be forever. The Lord shall be glad in his works. He looks upon the earth and makes it tremble. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing to my God as long as I exist. May my words be pleasing to him and I shall be glad in the Lord. May sinners cease from the earth and the lawless who has to be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the mercy. For the peace from above and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for those that are with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For his beatitude, our most blessed metropolitan, Tikhon, for his eminence, our most reverend Archbishop Paul, for the honorable priesthood, the diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. For the President, Congress, and Judiciary, and all civil authorities of this country, and for the first responders and those serving in the armed forces, let us pray to the Lord. For this town of Magadur, for the township of Suffield, for every city and country, and for the faithful dwelling in them, let us pray to the Lord. 
for seasonable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For travelers by land, by sea, and by air, the sick, the suffering, the captives, and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by your grace. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and never Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other in all our life unto Christ our God. For unto thee our dual glory, honor, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages.
In the beginning, God made heaven and earth. The earth was invisible and unfinished, and darkness was over the deep. The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of water. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw the light, it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, the darkness he called night. And there was evening and morning one day. Then God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the water, and let it divide the water from the water. And so it was so. Thus God made the firmament, and God divided the water under the firmament from the water above the firmament. So God called the firmament heaven, and God saw that it was good. And there was evening and morning the second day. Then God said, let the water under heaven be gathered together into one place, and let dry land appear. And it was so. The water under heaven was gathered into its place, and the dry land appeared. So God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called the seas. And God said that it was good. And then God said, let the earth bring forth the herb of grass, bearing seed according to its kind and likeness. Let the fruit tree bear fruit, those whose seed is in itself according to the herb of grass, bearing seed according to its kind and likeness. The fruit tree bore fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind on earth. God saw that it was good, so evening and morning were the third day. Wisdom. The reading is from the prophecy of Isaiah. Let us attend. Shine, shine, O Jerusalem, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Behold, darkness and gloom shall cover the earth upon the nations, but the Lord will shine on you, and his glory shall be seen upon you. Kings shall come to your light, and the Gentiles to your brightness. Lift up your eyes all around and see your children gathered together. Behold, all your sons come from afar, and your daughters shall be lifted upon their shoulders. Then you will see fear and be amazed in your heart, because the wealth of the sea and of nations and peoples shall change their course and turn to you. Herds of camels shall come to you, and the camels of Midian and Ephrath shall cover you. All those from Sheba shall come bearing gold, and they shall bring frankincense and proclaim the good news of the Lord's salvation. All the sheep of Kedar shall be gathered together to you, and the rams of Nebahoth shall come to you. They shall offer acceptable sacrifices upon my altar, and my house of prayer shall be glorified. Who are these who fly like clouds and like doves with young? The coastlands waited for me, and the sheep, the ships of Tarshish come among the first to bring your children from afar, and silver and gold with them for the sake of the Lord's name, and because the Holy One of Israel is glorified. Foreigners shall build your walls, and their kings shall defend you, for I struck you because of my wrath, and I loved you because of my mercy. 
Your gates shall be open continually, and they shall not be shut day or night to bring you the power of the Gentiles and their kings leading them. For the nations and their kings who will not serve you shall perish, and those nations will be utterly desolate. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you with the cypress, the pine, and the cedar together to glorify my holy place. The sons of those who humbled and provoked you shall go to you in fear, and you shall be called City of the Lord, Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Because you were forsaken and hated, and there was no one to help you, therefore I will make you an eternal joy, the gladness of generations to generations. You shall drink the milk of the Gentiles and eat the wealth of kings. You shall know I am the Lord who saves you, and the God of Israel who delivers you. Wisdom. The reading is from Exodus. Let us attend. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, On the tenth day of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the family households, a lamb for each home. If there be too few in a household, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it, according to the number of souls. He will make his count in lambs according to the needs of each one. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it from the sheep or the kids, then you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. They shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire. With unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw nor boiled at all with water, but roast it in fire, its head with its legs and its entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning, nor shall you break a bone of it. And what remains of it until morning, you shall burn with fire. Thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Pascha. Wisdom. The reading from the prophecy of Jonah. Let us attend. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amity, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, the great city, and preach in it, for the city of her wickedness has come up to me. But Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So he went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish, paid his fare, and boarded the ship to set sail with him to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord raised up a great wind upon the sea, and there came about a mighty tempest, and the ship was in danger of breaking up. And the mariners were afraid and cried out, each one to God, and they cast out the cargo of the ship into the sea, attempting to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone below into the hold of the ship, had gone to sleep and was snoring. The captain came to him and said, Why are you snoring? Get up and call upon your God, that your God may keep us safe, so we may not perish. And each one said to his shipmate, Come, let us cast lots to find out on whose account this calamity is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us, what is your occupation? Where do you come from, and from what country and people are you? And he said to them, I am a servant of the Lord, and I worship the Lord God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, What is this you did? For the men knew he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Then they said to him, What should we do to you that the sea will calm itself for us? For the sea continued to be tempestuous, and the waves rose up even higher. And Jonah said to them, 
take me up and cast me into the sea, and the sea will grow calm for you. For I know this great tempest is upon you because of me. So the men tried hard to return to the land, but were unable to do so. For the sea arose and grew even more tempestuous against them. Then they cried out to the Lord and said, Please, O Lord, do not let, this, let us perish on account of this man's life, not bringing righteous blood upon us. For you, O Lord, have brought this about. So they took up Jonah and threw them into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. And the men feared the Lord even more, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and vowed vows. Now the Lord commanded a huge sea crystal creature to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the sea creature three days and three nights. And from the belly of the sea creature, Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, and said, I cried out my affliction to the Lord, my God. He heard my voice out of the belly of Hades. You heard the cry of my voice. You cast me into the depths of the heart of the sea, and the rivers encompassed me. All your surging waters and your waves passed over me. And I said, I have been driven away from your sight. Shall I again look with favor toward your holy temple? Water is poured over me to my soul, the lowest depth encircled me. My head plunged into the clefts of the mountains. I descended into the earth. The bars of which are everlasting barriers, let, yet let my life ascend from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul was failing from me, I remembered the Lord. May my prayer be brought to you into your holy temple. Those who follow vanity and lies forsake their own mercy. But a voice of thanksgiving and praise, I will sacrifice to you as much as I vow. I shall offer up to you, to you, the Lord of deliverance. Then the Lord commanded the sea creature, and it cast up Jonah unto the dry land. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, the great city, and preach there according to the message I previously spoke to you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, which is as the Lord spoke. Nineveh was an exceedingly great city to God, a journey of about three days. And Jonah began to enter the city, going a day's journey, where he proclaimed and said, Yet three days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the men of Nineveh, Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest one of them to the least. Then the word came to the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, and put on sackcloth and sat upon ashes. And it was proclaimed and spoken in Nineveh by the king and by his great men, saying, Let not the men, cattle, oxen, or sheep taste anything, eat or drink water. So the men and the cattle were clothed with sackcloth, and they cried out fervently to God, and they each turned back from their evil ways, from the wrong, evil wrongdoings of their hands, saying, Who knows if God shall have a change of heart and turn from his fierce anger, that we should not perish. And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil ways, and God had a change of heart about the evil which he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. But Jonah was deeply grieved and troubled, so he prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, were these not my words when I was yet in my land? Therefore I saw the need to therefore I saw the need to flee to Tarshish, because I knew you to be compassionate and merciful, long suffering and abundant in mercy, and willing to change your heart concerning evils. And now, Master Lord, take my life for me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said to Jonah, Are you exceedingly grieved? Then Jonah went out of the city and seated himself opposite him. There he made for himself a tent and sat under its shade until he might observe what would happen to the city. And the Lord commanded a gourd that came over the head of Jonah to be a shade over his head to shield him from the discomforts. Jonah rejoiced with great joy because of the gourd. But early next morning, God commanded a worm, and it smote the gourd, and the gourd withered up. And when the sun rose, God commanded a burning east wind, and the man beat down on the head of Jonah, and he grew faint and despaired out of his life. <coughs> and he said, It is better for me to die than to live. Then God said to Jonah, Are you exceedingly grieved on account of the gourd? And he said, I am exceedingly grieved even unto death. 
And the Lord said, You took pity on the gourd for which you did not labor, nor did you make it grow, which came up during the night and perished before the next night. And shall I myself not take pity upon Nineveh, to that great city in which dwell more than 120,000 people who do, not know, who do not know either their right hand or their left hand, and many livestock? Wisdom. Let us attend. Then the children of Israel kept Pascha on the 14th day of the month at, at evening to the west of Jericho, across the Jordan in the plain. They ate of the unleavened and new wheat of the land. On this day the manna ceased after they ate the, from the wheat of the land. Thus the children of Israel no longer had manna. They enjoyed the fruits in the land of the Phoenicians in that year. Then it came to pass when Joshua was at Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing before him with a sword drawing in, in his hand. So Joshua came near and said to him, Are you for us or on the side of our adversaries? He said to him, I am now, I am now come, the chief captain of the host of the Lord. Then Joshua fell on his face upon the earth and said to him, O oh, Master, what do you command your servant? The chief captain of the Lord said to Joshua, Loose the shoe from your feet, for the place on which you stand is holy. Wisdom. The reading is from Exodus. Let us attend. So they took their journey through Sakaf and camped in Ephah by the desert. Moreover, God led them by name into the world cloud to show them the way by night in a pillar of fire. Thus the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not depart from before all the people. Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they turn and camp in the village between Midgal and the sea, opposite Baals of Bon, and you shall camp before them by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are wandering in a land the desert has closed them in. Then I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. And I will be glorified in Pharaoh and all over all his army, that the Egyptians may know I am the Lord. So they did. Now it was told the king of the Egyptians that the people had fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people, and they said, Why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? So he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. Also he took six hundred choice chariots, and all the chariots of each were captains over every one of them. Thus the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and his servants. And he pursued the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. So the Egyptians pursued them all the cavalry and chariots of Pharaoh, his horsemen and his army, and overtook them camping by the village opposite Baal's upon. Now when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel opened their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, now you take us away to die in the desert. Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Is this not the word we told you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it is better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Then Moses said to the people, be of good courage, stand still and see the Lord's salvation, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. Now lift up your rod and stretch up your hand over the sea and divide it. And let the children of Israel go on right round through the midst of the sea. I am evil heart and Pharaoh's heart and all of the Egyptians, and they will go in after them. So I will be glorified in Pharaoh and over all his army, his chariots, and his horses. Then the Egyptians will know I am the Lord when I am glorified upon Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horses. Now the angel of God who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them, and the pillar of God also went from before them and stood behind them. So it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and the night passed. But there was such darkness and light that they did not come near one another all that night. Then Moses stretched out his head over the sea, and the Lord carried back the sea by a strong south wind all that night, and made the sea dry ground. Thus the waters were divided, so the children of Israel
Israel went into the midst of the sea on the dry ground, and the waters were awalled them on their right hand and on their left. Then the Egyptians pursued and went after them in the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and horsemen. Now it came to pass in the morning watch. The Lord looked down upon the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud, and he troubled the army of the Egyptians. He bound the axle of their chimney wheels and caused them to proceed with difficulty. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so the waters may come back upon the Egyptians on their chariots and the riders. So Moses stretched out his head over the sea, and when the morning appeared, the sea returned to its full depth, while the Egyptians were trying to flee. But the Lord shook out the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Then the waters returned and covered the chariot, the horsemen, and all of the neighbors army that came into the sea after them. Not so much as one of them remained, but the children of Israel walked on dry ground in the midst of the sea. The waters were all to them on their right hand and on their left. So the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Thus Israel saw the Lord's mighty hand and the things he did to the Egyptians. Therefore the people feared the Lord and believed God and his servant Moses. Now Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to God and spoke, saying, Let us sing to the Lord, for he is greatly glorified. For gloriously has he been glorified. Moses and Israel against running to the sea. The Lord became my offer and shield of thy salvation. Let us sing to the Lord. For gloriously has he been glorified. He is my God and my Lord. In my father's God, and I will exalt him. Let us sing to the Lord. For glorious he has he been glorified. The Lord brings force to nothing, the Lord is his name. Mayor of chariots and army, he cast into the sea. Let us sing to the Lord. For glorious he has he been glorified. His churches and captains also were drowned in the Red Sea. The sea covered them, they sank to the bottom like a stone. Let us sing to the Lord. Let us sing to the Lord. Lord you sent forth your wrath and consumed them like a stubble. By the spirit of your anger, the waters were gathered together. Let us sing to the Lord. Lord the waves stood up right in the midst of the sea. The depths conjured over the heart of the sea. Let us sing to the Lord. i 
salvation, O oh Lord, which your hands made ready, the sanctuary, O oh Lord, which your hands established, let us say to the Lord. The oh Lord reigns forever and ever, for Pharaoh's horses went with his chariots and horsemen into the sea, and the Lord brought back the waters of the sea upon them. Let us sing to the Lord. But the children of Israel walk on dry ground in the midst of the sea. Let us sing to the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Let us sing to the Lord. Now and ever and to ages of ages of men, let us sing to the Lord. prophecy of Zephaniah. Let us attend. Wait for me, says the Lord, until the day of my rising up as a testimony, for my judgment shall be for the gathering of the nations, to receive kings to pour out upon them all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be consumed with the fire of my jealousy, for then I shall transform for the people a language for her generation, for all to call upon the name of the Lord, to serve him under one yoke. From the boundaries of the rivers of Ethiopia they will bring offerings to me. And that day you will not be ashamed of all your practices in which you acted profanely against me. For at that time I will take away from you the contempt of your arrogance, and you shall no longer be haughty upon my holy mountain. And I will leave among you a gentle and humble people who will show reverence to the name of the Lord. The remnant of Israel will not commit unrighteousness nor speak vanities. Neither will a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they will feed and lie down, and there will be no one terrifying them. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Cry aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Be glad and rejoice with your whole heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away your iniquities and ransomed you from your enemies. The Lord, the King of Israel, is in your midst, and you will no longer see any evil. Wisdom. The reading is from the third book of Kingdoms. Let us attend. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath of Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the city, there was a widow gathering firewood. Elijah called her and said, Please bring me a little water and a cup so I can drink. She went to get it, and Elijah called after her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But the woman said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have any bread, only a handful of flour in a bin, and a little oil in a jar. You see, I am gathering a couple of sticks, so I can go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. But Elijah said to her, Take courage and do as you say, but make a small cake from it first and bring it to me. Afterward, make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the bin of flour shall not be used up and a jar of oil shall not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So the woman went and did it. Thus she and, she, and he and her children ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up and the jar of oil did not run dry. According to the word of the Lord spoke by Elijah. Now after this, the son of the woman who owned the house became sick. His sickness was so serious that there was no breath left in him. So she said to Elijah, What have I to do with you, O man of God? You came to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to kill my son. But Elijah said to her, Give me your son. So he took him out of her arms and carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on his bed. Then Elijah cried out to the Lord and said, Woe is me, O Lord, the witness of the widow with whom I lodge. You have embittered her by killing her son. Then he stretched out himself on the child three times and called on the Lord and said, O Lord my God, let the soul of this child come back to him. So it happened and the child cried out. He took the child and brought him down from the upper room of the house and gave him to his mother. Elijah said, Behold, your son lives. Then the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and the word of the Lord in your mouth is the truth. Wisdom. The reading is from the prophecy of Isaiah. Let us attend. 
Let my soul rejoice exceedingly in the Lord, for he clothed me with the garment of salvation and the tunic of gladness. He put a mitre around me like a bridegroom and adorned me with ornaments like a bride. As the earth causes its flower to grow, and as a garden its seeds, so shall the Lord cause righteousness to rise up and exceeding joy before all the Gentiles. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until my righteousness goes forth as light and my salvation burns like a lamp. The Gentiles will see your righteousness and kings your glory, and one will call you by your new name, which the Lord shall name. You shall also be a crown of beauty in the Lord's hand and the diadem of a kingdom in the hand of your God. You shall no longer be called forsaken, and your land shall not be called desert, for you shall be called my will, and in your land the inhabited earth. As a young man lives in wedlock with a virgin, so shall your sons dwell with you. And as a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so the Lord shall rejoice over you. Wisdom. The reading is from Genesis. Let us attend. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Take now your beloved son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a whole burnt offering on one of the mountains, I tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son. And he split firewood for the whole burnt offering, and arose and went to the place God told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. Thus Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the firewood of the whole burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. Then he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. Then Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the firewood, but where is the sheep for a whole burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the sheep for a whole burnt offering. So the two of them went together. They came to the place where God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the firewood in order. And he bound Isaac his son hand and foot and laid him on the altar on the, upon the firewood. Then Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, Here I am. He then replied, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know you fear God, since for my sake you have not spared your beloved son. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him a ram was caught in a thicket by his horns. So he brought it for a whole burnt offering in the place of his son. Thus Abraham called the name of the place the Lord has appeared, as it is said to this day, in the mountain the Lord was seen. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you did this thing, and for my sake did not spare your beloved son, I will certainly bless you and assuredly multiply your seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand on the seashore and your seed shall inherit the cities of their enemies. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because 
you obeyed my voice. Wisdom. The reading is from the prophecy of Isaiah. Let us attend. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because of which he anointed me. He sent me to proclaim good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to declare the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of recompense, and to comfort all who mourn, to give those who mourn in Zion glory instead of ashes, the oil of gladness to those who mourn, the garment of glory instead of a spirit of indifference, they shall be called generations of righteousness, the planting of the Lord for glory. They shall build the ancient deserts, raise up the formerly abandoned, and renew the desert cities that lay waste for generations. Foreigners shall come and shepherd your sheep, and aliens shall be your plowmen and vine dressers. But you shall be called the priests of the Lord and the ministers of God. You shall eat the strength of nations and be admired because of their wealth. So they shall inherit the land a second time, and eternal gladness shall be upon their head. For I am the Lord who loves righteousness and hates robberies of wrongdoing. I will give their labor to the righteous, and will make them an everlasting covenant. Their seed and their offspring shall be known among the Gentiles. All who see them shall know. These are the seed blessed by God, and they shall have exceeding gladness in the Lord. Wisdom. The reading is from the fourth book of Kingdoms. Let us attend. Now one day Elisha went to Shunem, where there was a persuasive woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was, as often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. And the woman said to her husband, Look now, I know this is a holy man of God who comes to us regularly. Let us make a small room upstairs, and let us put a bed there for him, with a table, a stool, a chair, and a lampstand. And it shall be when he comes to us, he will turn aside into this place. Now it happened one day that he came and he went there, and turned aside into the upper room and lay there. Then he said to his servant Gehazi, Call this Shunammite woman. He called her, and she stood before him. And he said to Gehazi, Say now to her, Hear me. You have shown us all this care. What can I do for you? Do you have any requests for the king or the commander of the army? But she answered, I dwell among my own people. So Elisha said, What then is to be done for her? And his servant Gehazi replied, She certainly has no son, and her husband is old. Then Elisha called her, and she stood by the door. And Elisha said, About this time next year you shall embrace a son. So she said, No, my lord, do not lie to your maidservant. Then as Elisha told her, the woman conceived, and she bore a son when the appointed time came. And the child grew, and it came to pass that when he went out to his father to the reaping, that he said to his father, My head, my head. His father said to his servant, Carry him to his mother. So he carried him to his mother, and he lay upon her knees till noon and died. She took him up and laid him on the bed of the man of God. She went out and closed the door as she left. She called to her husband and said, Please bring to me one of the young men and one of the donkeys. I will ride quickly to the man of God and come back. So he said, Why go to him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. And she replied, It is well. She saddled the donkey and said to her servant, Lead onward and do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. She rode and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. And when the man of God saw her, he said to his servant Gehazi, Look, it is that Shunammite woman. Please run now to meet her and say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, Peace. Now she came to the man of God on the hill and took hold of him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to push her away. But the man of God said, Leave her alone, for her soul is in deep distress. And the Lord hid it from me and did not tell me. So she said, Did I ask my Lord for a son? Did I not tell you not to deceive me? Then Elisha said to Gehazi, Prepare yourself, take my staff in your hand, and be on your way. If you meet anyone, you will not greet him. And if anyone greets you, you will not answer him. You shall lay my staff on the face of the child. Then the mother of the child said, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So Elisha rose and followed her. Now Gehazi went on ahead of them and laid the staff on the child's face, but there was neither voice nor hearing. So he went back to meet him and, said, and told him, saying, The child is not awakened. Elisha went into the house, and there was the child lying dead on his bed. He went into the room and shut the door against the other two and prayed to the Lord. 
Then he went up and lay on the child and put his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands. And he bowed himself down upon him, and the flesh of the child mourned. He returned and walked back and forth in the house, and he went up and bowed himself down upon the child seven times, and the child opened his eyes. Then Elisha called to Gehazi and said, Call this Shunammite woman. So he called her, and she went to where he was, and he said, Take your son. So she went in, fell at his feet, and bowed to the ground. Then she took her son and went out. Wisdom. The reading is from the prophecy of Isaiah. Let us attend. Then he remembered the days of old, he who brought up the shepherd of his sheep from the land. Where is he who put his Holy Spirit in them? Where is he who led Moses with his right hand, the arm of his glory? He overpowered the water by his presence to make for himself an everlasting name. He brought them through the deep like a horse through the desert, yet they did not grow weary. Like cattle through the plain, the Spirit came down from the Lord and guided them. Thus you led your people to make yourself a glorious name. Return from heaven and look from your holy and glorious dwelling place, where your zeal and your strength were is the multitude of your mercy and your compassion, so as to be patient with us. You are our father, although Abraham did not know us and Israel did not acknowledge us. But you, O Lord, are our father. You delivered us, and from the beginning your name was upon us. Why have you led us astray, O Lord, from your path and harden your hearts? Harden our hearts so as not to fear you. Return for the sake of your servant, for the sake of the tribes of your inheritance, that we may inherit a small portion of your holy mountain. For your adversaries trampled down your sanctuary, and we have become as we are from the beginning. When you did not rule us, neither did we call upon your name. If you hope in heaven, trembling shall take hold of the mountains before you, and they shall melt as wax melts before the fire. When you do glorious things, trembling shall take hold of the mountains because of you. From of old we have not heard, nor have our eyes seen any God but you, and your works which you shall do for those who wait for your mercy. For mercy shall meet with those who do righteousness, and they shall remember your ways. Wisdom. The reading is from the prophecy of Jeremiah. Let us attend. Thus says the Lord, Behold, days are coming, says the Lord. When shall I make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah? Not according to the covenant I made with their fathers in the day I took hold of their hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. For they did not abide in my covenant, and I disregarded them, says the Lord. For this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will surely put my laws into their mind and write them on their hearts. I will be as God to them, and they shall be as my people. Each shall not teach his neighbor, and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful to the wrongdoings, and I will no longer remember their sins. Wisdom. The reading from the prophecy of Daniel. Let us attend. In his 18th year, King Nebuchadnezzar made a golden image. Its height was 60 cubits and its width six cubits. And he set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar sent to gather together the high officials, the commanders, governors, rulers, and all those in authority, along with all the rulers of the provinces, to come to the dedication of the image King Nebuchadnezzar set up. So the governors, high officials, leaders, great rulers, all those in authority who ruled the provinces came to the dedication of the image King Nebuchadnezzar set up, and they stood before the image Nebuchadnezzar made. <clears throat> then the herald, crawling out in a loud voice, to you it is commanded, O peoples and tribes and languages, that in what hour you hear the sound of the trumpet, the pipe, the harp, the four-string instrument, and every kind of music, you shall fall down and worship the golden image King Nebuchadnezzar set up. But whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the burning, fiery furnace. 
So at that time, when all the peoples heard the sound of the trumpet, the pipe, harp, four string instrument, and every kind of music, all the peoples, tribes, and languages fell down and worshiped. The golden image King Nebuchadnezzar set up. <clears throat> then Chaldean men came forward and brought forth charges against the Jews and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the trumpet, the pipe, harp, four string instruments, and every kind of music, but does not fall down and worship the golden image, shall be cast into the burning fiery furnace. Now there are certain Jews you set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men did not be obey your decree, O king, and they do not serve your gods, nor do they worship the golden image you set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, gave command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So the men were brought before the king. Nebuchadnezzar then answered and said to them, it is true, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or, or worship the golden image I set up? Now then, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, the pipe, harp, the four-string instrument, and every kind of music, that you shall fall down and worship the golden image I made. But if indeed you do not worship at that time, you shall be cast into the burning fiery furnace. Then what God is there who will deliver you from my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, We have no need to answer you in regard to this thing, for there is a God in heaven, and we serve, and he is able to save us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hands, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we will not serve your God, nor worship the golden image you set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of anger, and the expression on his face changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So he commanded them to heat the furnace seven times more until it burned to its fullest. Then he commanded certain very strong men to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Thereupon those men were bound together with their sandals, caps, lay coverings, and clothing, and were cast in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Because the king's command was urgent and the furnace was exceedingly hot, these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. But they walked about in the midst of the flames, singing to God and praising the Lord. Then Abednego stood and prayed this and opened his mouth in the midst of the fire and said, Blessed are you and praiseworthy, O Lord, the God of our fathers, and praised and glorified is your name unto the ages. For you are righteous, and in all you did for us, and in all your works are true. Your ways are upright, and all your judgments are true. The judgments you made are true according to all you brought on us, and on the holy city of our fathers, because in truth and judgment you did all these things on account of our sins. For we sinned and acted lawlessly to depart from you. We sinned in every way and did not obey your commandments. Neither did we treasure or do as you commanded, that it might go well with us. Everything you brought on us and all you did to us, you did it through judgment. You delivered us into the hands of lawless and rebellious enemies and to an unjust king most evil of any kind. Now it is not for us to open our mouth, for this has become a shame and a disgrace to your servants and to those who worship you. For your name's sake, do not hand us over to the end and do not reject our, your covenant do not withdraw your mercy from us for the sake of Abraham, who is loved by you, and for the sake of Isaac, your servant, and of Israel, your Holy One, as you spoke to them, saying that you would multiply their seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand along the seashore. Yet we have been diminished in number, O oh Master, more than all the nations, and we are humbled in all the earth today because of our sins. At this time there is no prince, no prophet, no leader, there is no birth offering, no sacrifice, no offering, no incense. There is no place to bear fruit before you and to find mercy. Yet with contrite soul and humble spirit, may we receive mercy as with whole burnt offering of rams and bulls, as with thousands of fatted lambs. So let this be our sacrifice before you today, and may it be accomplished for those of you who follow you, for there is no shame for those who trust in you. Now we are following you with all our heart, and we fear you seek your face. Do not put us to shame, but deal with us according to your kindness and according to your abundant mercy. Deliver
deliver us by your wondrous works and give glory to your name, O Lord. May all those who inflict evils upon your servants be to shame and humble in their power, and let their strength be crushed. Let them know that you alone are the Lord God and glorious over all the inhabited earth. Now the king's servants who cast them in did not cease to stroke the furnace with naphtha pitch, coarse fiber, and fresh wood. The flame shot 49 cubits above the furnace, and it broke out and burned those found around the furnace of the Chaldeans. But the angel of the Lord went down into the furnace to join Abednego and his companions and shook off the fiery flame of the furnace. He made the inside of the furnace to be as through though a dew-laden breeze were blowing through it, so the fire did not touch them at all or cause them pain or trouble them. Then the three, as with one mouth, sang, glorified, and blessed the God of the furnace, saying, Blessed are you, O God, God of our fathers, for you are praiseworthy and exalted beyond measure unto the ages. Blessed is your name in the temple of your glory, and you are praised exceedingly and exalted beyond measure unto ages. You are blessed in the holy temple of your glory, and are highly praised and exceedingly glorious unto the ages. Blessed are you in the throne of your kingdom, and you are praised and exalted beyond measure unto the ages. Blessed are you who behold the depths and sit upon the cherubim. You are praiseworthy and exalted beyond measure unto the ages. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven, for you are praised and glorified unto the ages. Praise the Lord, sing and exalt him throughout all the ages. Bless the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Bless the Lord, you angels of the Lord. Bless the Lord, you heavens. Bless the Lord, all you waters above heaven. Praise the Lord, sing and exalt him throughout all the ages. Bless the Lord, all you powers of the Lord. Bless the Lord, you sun and moon. Bless the Lord, you stars of heaven. Bless the Lord, every shower and dew. Praise the Lord, sing and exalt him throughout all the ages. Bless the Lord, all you winds. Bless the Lord, you fire and heat. Bless the Lord, you winter and cold summer, and cold and summer heat. Bless the Lord, you dews and snow. Praise the Lord, sing and exalt him throughout all the ages. Bless the Lord, you frost and snow. Bless the Lord, you frost and snows. Bless the Lord, you night and day. Bless the Lord, you light and darkness. Bless the Lord, you lightning and clouds. Let the earth bless the Lord. Praise the Lord, sing and exalt him throughout all the ages. Bless the Lord, you mountains and hills. Bless the Lord, all you things growing on the earth. Bless the Lord, you springs. Bless the Lord, you seas and rivers. Praise the Lord, sing and exalt him throughout all the ages. Bless the Lord, you sea monsters and everything that moves in the waters. Bless the Lord, all you birds of heaven. Bless the Lord, all you wild animals and cattle. Bless the Lord, O children of men. Bless the Lord, O Israel. Praise the Lord, sing and exalt him throughout all the ages. Bless the Lord, O priests of the Lord. Bless the Lord, O servants of the Lord. Bless the Lord, O spirits and souls of the righteous. Praise the Lord, sing and exalt him throughout all the ages. Bless the Lord, O holy ones and humble in heart. Bless the Lord, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Bless the Lord, the God of gods, all you who worship him. Bless the Lord, apostles, prophets, and martyrs of the Lord. Praise the Lord, sing and exalt him throughout all the ages. Bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to ages of ages. Amen. Praise the Lord, sing and exalt him throughout all the ages. Give praise, bless, and worship the Lord, singing and exalting him throughout all the ages. Praise the Lord, sing and exalt him Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy in us, and keep us, O God, by your grace. Mercy. 
commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other in all our life unto Christ our God. For holy art thou, our God, and unto thee do we ascribe glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Attend. Peace be unto all. And your spirit. Wisdom. Let all the earth worship you and praise you. Let it sing praise to your name, O Most High. Resurrection. 
Bless Master Mupple claims the glad tidings of the holy apostle and evangelist Matthew. May God, through the prayers of the holy, glorious, all audible apostle and evangelist Matthew, enable you to proclaim the glad tidings with great power to the fulfillment of the gospel of his beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Wisdom, let us attend, let us listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be unto all. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Let us attend. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guard shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice! So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Now while they were going, behold, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priests all the things that had happened. When they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, saying, Tell them his disciples came at night and stole him away while we slept. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will appease him and make you secure. So they took the money and did as they were instructed. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Peace be unto thee who proclaims the glad tidings. Let us say with all our soul and with all our mind, let us say, O oh Lord Almighty, the God of our fathers, we pray you hear us and have mercy. Have mercy in us, O oh God, according to your great goodness, we pray you hear us and have mercy. Again, we pray for our most blessed Metropolitan Tikhon, for His Eminence, our most Reverend Archbishop Paul, 
for priests, deacons, and all the clergy, and for all our brethren in Christ. Again, we pray for the President, Congress, and Judiciary, and all civil authorities of this country, and for the first responders and those serving in the armed forces. Again, we pray for our brethren, the priests, the priests, monks, and for all our brotherhood in Christ. Again, we pray for the blessed and ever memorable holy Orthodox patriarchs, for the blessed and ever memorable founders of this holy house, and for all our fathers and brethren, the Orthodox departed this life before us, who here in all the world that lie asleep and alone. Again, we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, and visitation of the servants of God, the communicants of this parish, especially the sick and the suffering, and for all those in particular need of God's help and mercy, and for the pardon and remission of their sins. Again, we pray for those who bring offerings and good works in this holy and all venerable house, for those who labor and those who sing, and for all the people here present who await your great and rich mercy. That with us they may glorify thine all honorable and for unto thee are to all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Pray to the Lord, you catechumens. Let us, the faithful, pray for the catechumens that the Lord may have mercy on them, that he may teach them the word of truth, that he may reveal to them the gospel of righteousness, that he may unite them to his holy Catholic and apostolic church. Help them, save them, have mercy on them, and keep them, O God, by your grace. Bow your heads to the Lord, you catechumens. That with us they may glorify thine all honorable and majestic name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. All catechumens depart, depart catechumens, all that are catechumens depart, let no catechumen remain. Let us, the faithful, again and again in peace, pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O oh God, by your grace. Wisdom. For unto the earth do all glory, honor, and worship, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for those that are with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance, small affliction, rad, danger, necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by your grace. Wisdom. Thy guarded always by thy mind, we may ascribe glory unto thee, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages.
sinner, have mercy upon me. O God, cleanse me, a sinner, and have mercy upon me. O God, cleanse me, a sinner, and have mercy upon me. Let all mortal feet flesh keep silent, and in fear and trembling stand, pondering nothing earthly minded. For the King of kings and the Lord of lords comes to be slain, to give himself as food to the faithful. Before him go the ranks of angels, all the principalities and powers, the many-eyed cherubim, the six-winged seraphim, covering their faces, singing the hymn, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let all mortal flesh keep silent, and in fear and trembling stand, pondering nothing earthly-minded. For the King of kings and the Lord of lords comes to be slain, to give himself as food to the faithful. Before him go the ranks of angels, all the principalities and powers, the many-eyed cherubim, the six-winged seraphim, covering their faces, singing the hymn, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let all mortal flesh keep silent, and in fear and trembling stand, pondering nothing earthly-minded. For the King of kings and the Lord of lords comes to be slain, to give himself as food to the faithful. Before him go the ranks of angels, all the principalities and powers, the many-eyed cherubim, the six-winged seraphim, covering their faces, singing to him, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Forgive me, my brothers in Christ. May Lord God forgive and Lord God be merciful Forgive me, us. my brothers and, us. and sisters in Christ. Incense we offer you, Christ the God of the Lord, Spirit, and grace thou, Christ, the Lord, and grace for the Holy Spirit. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens, and thy glory over all the earth. Lift up, Master. Lift thy voice to the holy place, and praise the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Kingdom always now and ever. Lord, I remember our priest in his kingdom always now and ever and into ages of ages. His beatitude, our most blessed Tikhon. Archbishop of Washington, Metropolitan of all America and Canada, and His Grace, the Most Reverend Archbishop Paul, Bishop of Chicago and the Diocese of the Midwest, may the Lord God remember in His kingdom, always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. The Honorable Priesthood, the Diaconate in Christ, the whole priestly and monastic order, may the Lord God remember in His heavenly kingdom, always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages the President of these United States, all those in civil authority. May the Lord God remember in his heavenly kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages, the founders, beautifiers, and benefactors of this holy church, the members of the parish council, the members of the church school and their teachers, the members of the junior and senior oak clubs, the members of the brotherhood, the sisterhood, for all the support organizations of the parish, all those who teach and learn herein, all those here present and those for whom we pray, may the Lord God remember in his heavenly kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages, the sick and the suffering, those in need of God's mercy and help, and especially all those suffering the ongoing pandemic, may the Lord God remember in his heavenly kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages, those departed this life whose names we commemorated today and among them, all of our departed fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, spouses, children, family members and friends, the departed founders, pastors, and Matushki of this parish, together with all the departed remembered here today, and especially all those who lost their lives in the ongoing pandemic, May the Lord God remember in his heavenly kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. You and all Orthodox Christians, may the Lord God remember in his heavenly kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Joseph, when he had taken down thy most your body from the tree and wrapped it in fine linen and anointed with spice and placed in his own tomb, in the tomb of the body and held the soul in paradise of the thief and on the throne of the Father and the Spirit, was thou bound as Christ filling all things, bearing life more fruitful than paradise, brighter than any royal chamber of thy tomb, O Christ.
Christ is the fountain of our resurrection. The noble Joseph, when he had taken down thy most sure body from the tree, wrapped it in fine linen and white, and the spice and place of his own tomb, to good to Zion, rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, then shall go out the light and right sacrifice, and burn offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they offer young bullocks upon the altar. Remember me, my brother and fellow. Lord, remember our priest and his kingdom. Pray for me, my brother and fellow. Who whispered to send you the power of the Most High. May the Holy Spirit Himself minister together thus all the days of our lives. Remember me, Holy Master. <laughs> May the Lord God remember His heavenly kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. complete our prayer to the Lord. For the precious gifts now offered, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for those that are with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance, small affliction, rad, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by your grace. That the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us ask of the Lord. An angel of peace, a faithful guide, and guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask of the Lord. Pardon and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask of the Lord. All things that are going profitable for our souls and peace for the world, let us ask of the Lord. That we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance, let us ask of the Lord. A Christian ending to our life, painless, blameless, and peaceful, and for a good defense before the dread judgment seat of Christ, let us ask of the Lord. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other in all our life unto Christ our God. Lord, that through the compassions of the only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thine all holy, good, and light creating spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Lord, peace be unto all. Let us love one another that with one mind we may confess. The doors, the doors, and wisdom let us attend.
Let us stand right, let us stand with fear, let us attend, that we may offer the holy oblation in peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord. O oh, existing one, Master, Lord God, Father Almighty, and adorable, let us truly meet and right and befitting the mighty assemblyness, the praise of the singing of the Bless thee, to worship thee, to give thanks to thee, to glorify thee, the only for the existing God, and to offer to thee this our reason to worship with a contrite heart and a spirit of humility. For thou hast granted us the love of thy truth, and come out of thy mighty acts, or make all thy praises known, or tell of all thy miracles of all times. O Master of all, Lord of heaven and earth, and of all creation, both visible and invisible, who sittest upon the throne of glory, and beholds the deaths without beginning, invisible, incomprehensible, indescribable, changeless. O Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great God and Savior, our hope, who is the image of thy goodness, the great, the seal of thy very likeness, showing forth in himself, Neo Father, the living word, the true God, the eternal wisdom, the life, the sanctification, the power, the true life, through whom the Holy Spirit was revealed, the spirit of truth, the gift of sonship, the pledge of future inheritance, the first roots of eternal blessings, the life creating power, the fountain of sanctification, through whom every creature of reason and understanding worships thee and always sings to thee a hymn of glory, for all things are thy servants. Thou art praised by angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, principalities, authorities, powers, and many I cherubim. Round about thee stand the seraphim, one with six wings and the other with six wings. With two they cover their faces, with two they cover their feet, and with two they fly, crying one to another with unceasing voices and ever resounding praises. Singing the triumphant hymn, shouting, proclaiming, and saying, Holy, 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 Lord, our Savior, both heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. With these blessed powers, O Master, who loves mankind, we sinners also cry aloud and say, Holy art thou, truly most holy, and there are no bounds in the midst of thy holiness. Thou art gracious in all thy deeds, with righteous and true judgment. Thou hast ordered all things for us. And thou dost create man by taking dust from the earth, and dishonor the land with thy own image of God. Thou didst set him in a paradise of the life, promising eternal life and the enjoyment of everlasting blessings. In the observance of thy commandments, when one man disobeyed with the true God who created him, and was deceived by the guile of the serpent, becoming subject to death through his own transgressions. Thou, O God, in thy righteous judgment, didst send him forth from paradise into this world, returning him to the earth from which he was taken, yet providing for him the salvation of regeneration in thy Christ himself. For thou dost not turn thyself away forever from thy creature whom thou hast made a good one, nor didst thou forget the work of thy hands. Through the tender compassion, thy mercy, thou didst visit him in various ways. Thou didst send prophets, thou didst perform mighty works by thy saints, who in every generation were well pleasing to thee. Thou didst speak to us by the mouth of thy servants, the prophets, foretelling to us the salvation which was to come. Thou didst give us a law as a help, thou didst appoint angels as guardians. And when the fullness have come, thou didst speak to us through thy Son himself by whom thou didst also make the ages, who being the radiance of thy glory and the image of thy person, upholding all things by the word of his power, thought it not robbery to be equal to thee, the God and Father. He was God before the ages, yet he appeared on earth and lived among men. Becoming incarnate of a holy virgin, he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being likened to the body of our lowliness, that he might liken us to the image of his glory. For as by man sin entered into the world, and by sin death, so it pleased thy only begotten Son, who was in the bosom of thee, the God and Father, who was born of a woman, the holy Theotokos, and ever virgin Mary, who was born under the law to condemn sin in his flesh, so that those who were dead in Adam might be alive in thy Christ himself. He lived in this world and gave us commandments of salvation, releasing us from the delusions of idolatry. He brought us to the knowledge of thee, the true God and Father. He obtained us for his own chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Having cleansed us in water and sanctified us with the Holy Spirit, he gave himself as a ransom to death in which he held captives sold under sin, descending through the cross into hell that he might fill all things with himself. He loosed the pangs of death. He arose on the third day, having made for all flesh a path to the resurrection from the dead, since it was not possible for the author of life to be a victim of corruption. 
So he became the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, the firstborn of the dead, that he might be himself truly first in all things. Ascending into heaven, he sat down at the right hand of thy majesty on high, and he will come to render to every man according to his works. And as memorials of his saving passion, he has left us these things which we have set forth according to his command. For when he was about to go forth to his voluntary and ever memorable and life creating death in the night in which he gave himself up for the life of the world, he took bread into his holy and pure hands and having shown it to thee, the God and Father, having given thanks, blessed, hallowed, and broken it. He gave it to his holy disciples and apostles saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you for the remission of sins. Likewise, he took the cup of the fruit of the vine and having mingled it and given thanks, blessed and hallowed it. He gave it to his holy disciples and apostles saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death and confess my resurrection. Therefore we also, O Master, remembering his saving passion and life-creating cross, his three-day burial and resurrection from the dead, his ascension into heaven and sitting at the right hand of thee, the God and Father, and his glorious and awesome second coming. Thine own, of thine own, we offer unto thee, on behalf of all and for all. We praise and we bless and we give thanks unto thee, O Lord, we pray unto thee, our God. Therefore, most holy Master, we also, thy sinful and unworthy servants, whom thou hast permitted to serve at thy holy altar, not because of our own righteousness, where we have done nothing good upon the earth, but because of thy mercy and compassion, which thou hast originally poured out on us, we now dare to approach thy holy altar and offering to thee the antitypes of the holy body and blood of thy Christ. We pray thee and call on thee, O Holy of Holies, that by the favor of thy goodness, thy Holy Spirit may come upon us and upon the gifts now offered to bless, to hallow, and to show. O God, cleanse me a sinner and have mercy upon me. O God, cleanse me a sinner and have mercy upon me. O God, cleanse me a sinner and have mercy upon me. O Lord, who did send down thy most holy spirit upon thine apostles at the third hour, take him not from us, O good one, but renew him in us who pray unto thee. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. O Lord, who did send down thy most holy spirit upon thine apostles at the third hour, take him not from us, O good one, but renew him in us who pray unto thee. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. O Lord, who did send down thy most holy spirit upon thine apostles at the third hour, take him not from us, a good one, but renew him in us who pray unto thee. Bless Master the Holy Bread. This bread to be the precious body of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Bless Master the Holy Cup. This cup to be the precious blood of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Shed for the life of the world. Amen. 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 Remember me a sinner. The Lord God, Brody Jack, and his heavenly kingdom always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. And unite all of us to one another who become partakers of the one bread and cup in the communion of the Holy Spirit. Grant that none of us may partake of the holy body and blood of thy Christ for judgment or condemnation. Instead, we may find mercy and grace with all the saints, who through the ages have been well-pleasing to the ancestors, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, teachers, and every righteous spirit made perfect in faith. Incense we offer thee, O Christ our God, as an odor or spiritual fragrance, sent down upon us in return thy divine grace and the gift of thine Holy Spirit. Especially with our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos, and ever virgin Mary. With the holy prophet for our Baptist, John, the holy glorious and all audible apostles, all the saints we commemorate today, and with all thy saints, by their prayers visit us, O God, for the salvation, visitation, and remission of sins of the servants of God, 
all the people here present and all those for whom we pray, the sick, the suffering, and all those in need of God's mercy and help. Remember all those who have fallen asleep before us in the hope of resurrection and eternal life, especially all the departed remembered on this day, the departed founders and family members of this parish, together with all the departed, grant the rest and forget us this world of our God in a place where there is no sign or sorrow, where the light of thy countenance shines in thee. Again, we entreat thee, remember, Lord, the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, who is meant to enter the universe. Give peace to her whom thou hast obtained with the precious blood of thy Christ. Also preserve this holy house until the end of the world. Remember, Lord, those who offer thee these gifts and those for whom and through whom they offered them in their intentions. Remember, O Lord, those who bring offerings and do good in thy holy churches. And those who remember the poor, reward them with thy rich and heavenly gifts for their earthly, temporal, and corruptible gifts. Do thou grant them thy heavenly ones, eternal and incorruptible. Remember, Lord, those who are in deserts, mountains, caverns, and pits of the earth. Remember, Lord, those who live in chastity and godliness and austerity and holiness of life. Remember, O Lord, this country and all civil authorities. Grant them a secure and lasting peace. Speak good things into their hearts concerning thy church and all thy people that we in their tranquility may lead a calm and peaceful life in all godliness and sanctity. Remember, O Lord, every principality and authority, our brothers who serve in the government and the armed forces, preserve the good and goodness and make the evil be good by thy goodness. Remember, O Lord, the people here present and also those who are absent for honorable reasons. Have mercy on them and on us according to the multitude of thy mercies. Fill their treasures with every good thing. Preserve their marriages in peace and harmony. Raise the infants, guide the young, support the aged, encourage the faint-hearted, reunite the separated, lead back those who are in error, and join them to thy holy Catholic and apostolic church. Free those who are held captive by unclean spirits, sail with those who sail, travel with those who travel by land and by air, defend the widows, protect the orphans, free the captives, heal the sick. Remember, O God, all those who are in courts, in mines, in exile, in harsh labor, and those in any kind of affliction, necessity, or distress. Remember, O Lord, our God, all those who entreat thy great loving kindness, those who love us, and those who hate us, those who have asked us to pray for them, unworthy though we be. And remember all the people, O Lord, our God, pour out thy rich mercy upon all of them, granting them all the petitions which are for their salvation. And remember thyself, O God, all those whom we have not remembered through ignorance, forgetfulness, or the multitude of names since thou knowest the name and age of each, even from his mother's womb. For thou, O Lord, art the helper of the helpless, the hope of the hopeless, the savior of the bestormed, the haven of the voyager, the physician of the sick. Be all things to all men, O thou who knowest each man and his request, his home and his need. Deliver this city, O Lord, and every city and country from famine, plague, earthquake, flood, fire, sword, invasion by enemies and civil war. Among the first, Remember, O Lord, his beatitude, our Metropolitan Tikon, his eminence, our Archbishop Paul. Grant them for the Holy Church is in peace, safety, honor, health, and length of days, rightly to define the word of thy truth. Remember, O Lord, all the earth and our who rightly define the word of thy truth. Remember, O Lord, my unworthiness also. By the multitude of thy compassions, forgive my every transgression, both voluntary and involuntary, because of my sins. Do not withhold the grace of thy Holy Spirit from these gifts here set forth. Remember, O Lord, the priesthood, the diaconate in Christ, and every order of the clergy. Let none of us who stand about thy holy altar be put to confusion. Visit us with thy loving kindness, O Lord. Manifest thyself to us through thy rich compassions. Grant us seasonable and healthful weather. Shed gentle showers upon the earth that it may bear fruit. Bless the crown of the year with thy goodness. Prevent schisms among the churches. Pacify the ragings of the pagans. Quickly destroy the uprisings of heresies by the power of thy Holy Spirit. Receive us all into thy kingdom, showing us to be sons of the light and sons of the day. Grant us thy peace and thy love, O Lord our God, for thou hast given all things to us. And grant that with one mouth and one heart we may praise and all honorable and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages, and the mercies of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with all of you. Having remembered all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. <laughs> For the precious gifts offered and sanctified, let us pray to the Lord. 
that our God who loves mankind, receiving them upon his holy, heavenly and ideal altar as a sweet spiritual fragrance, will send down upon us and turn his divine grace and gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy in us, and keep us, O God, by your grace. That the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us ask of the Lord. That angel of peace, a faithful God, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask of the Lord. For pardon and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask of the Lord. All things that are good and profitable for our souls and peace for the world, let us ask of the Lord. That we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance, let us ask of the Lord. A Christian ending to our life, painless, blameless, and peaceful, and for a good defense before the dread judgment seat of Christ, let us ask of the Lord. Having asked for the unity of the faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and each other in all our life unto Christ our God. Make us worthy, O Master, that with boldness and without condemnation we may dare to call on thee, the heavenly God as Father, and to say. is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto ages of ages. Peace be unto all. Bow your heads to the Lord. For the grace and compassion and love towards mankind of thy only begotten Son with whom thou art blessed together with thine all hope good and life creating spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Let us attend the holy thing are for the holy. Voluntary sins of word and of deed committed with knowledge or in ignorance, and make us worthy to partake without condemnation that most free mysteries for the remission of our sins and unto life everlasting. Amen. Proto Deacon, draw near. Behold, I draw near the mortal king, our God, given to me then with the deacon precious body, but word of God. Proto Deacon, Sam, to give the most precious blood, who our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, mission of sins, and unto life everlasting. Christ is in our midst. He is not with most precious body of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, is given unto me, the unworthy priest Nicholas, for the remission of my sins and unto life everlasting.
Christ is in our midst. Forgive me, my brothers. Dear Lord God, forgive you, Lord God. Be merciful and to us sisters, and forgive us, amen. Let us pray together and let us all say, I believe, O Lord, and I confess that thou art truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am first. I believe also this is truly thy own most pure body, and this is truly thy own most precious blood. Therefore, I pray thee, have mercy upon me. Forgive my transgressions, both voluntary and involuntary, of word and of deed committed in knowledge or in ignorance, and make me worthy to partake without condemnation of thy most pure mysteries, for the remission of my sins and unto life everlasting. Amen. Of thy mystical supper, O Son of God, accept me today as a communicant, for I will not speak of thy mysteries to the enemies. Neither like Judas will I give thee a kiss, but like the thief will I confess thee. Remember me, O Lord, in thy kingdom. May the communion of the holy mysteries be neither to my judgment nor to my condemnation, O Lord, but to the healing of soul and body. Amen. O God, cleanse me, a sinner, and have mercy upon me. O God, cleanse me, a sinner, and have mercy upon me. O God, cleanse me, a sinner, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, and Master Jesus Christ, Lord God, and the thousand of our life and your mortality, Lord, creator of every thing that is alive, and has the world, and has the world, and the eternal and everlasting Son of the Eternal Father, you have come in these latter days because of the abundance of your worship. You, you have for our human flesh were crucified and buried for us and for the first and second blessing of the Father. Amen. After your own blood, you have renewed our human nature, which is corrupted by Amen. sin. And now, our Lord, Lord we speak. Amen. Accept the repentance of the of sinners and apply your fear to the blessing of my word. I have a little bit of a king of God, but even more of a precious blood of the Lord God. And I have a little bit of a most precious blood of the Lord God, and say, most precious and my blessing of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And all this is touch your lips and show us your virtues and cleanse you from all your sins. But, O Lord, since you do not remember evil, but are long suffering and of great mercy, you have not given me over to destruction for my lawlessness. But have ever waited my conversion. O lover of mankind, you have said by your prophets, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. For you do not wish, O Master, that the work of your hands should perish, neither do you take pleasure in the destruction of man, but you desire that all people should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Therefore, although I am unworthy both of heaven and of earth, and of this passing life, having wholly yielded myself to sin, and defiled your image, yet being your creature and of your making, I do not despair of my salvation in my wickedness, but made bold by your infinite compassion, I draw near. Receive me, O Christ, who love mankind, as you received the prostitute, the thief, the tax collector, and the prodigal. Take away the heavy burden of my sins, for you take away the sins of the world. You heal the infirmities of mankind. You call to yourself and give rest to those who labor and are heavy laden. You have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Cleanse me from every state of flesh and spirit. Teach me to fulfill holiness in fear of you, that having the testimony of my own conscience clean, and having communion of your holy things, I may be united with your body and blood, and may have you to dwell and abide in me with the Father and your Holy Spirit. O Lord Jesus Christ, my God, may the communion of your most pure and life-creating mysteries not bring me into judgment, nor may I become weak in soul and body by partaking in an unworthy manner, but grant me to receive communion of your holy things without condemnation, even to my very last breath, and by them to receive communion of the Holy Spirit, provision for the journey of eternal life, and acceptable answer in your great judgment seat, that I, together with all your chosen ones, may also be a partaker of the incorruptible blessings which you have prepared for those who love you, O Lord, in whom you are glorified forever. Amen. I would think so, yeah. O Lord and Master Jesus Christ, our God, who alone has power to absolve men from their sin, for you are good and love mankind, Forgive all my transgressions, not in knowledge or in either 
In the fear of God and in faith and love draw near.
O oh God, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. We have seen the true Lord. We have seen the true And unto ages of ages. Attend, having partaken in divine, holy, most pure, immortal, having life creating and awesome mysteries of Christ, let us worthily give thanks to the Lord. Mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy in us, and keep us, O God, by your grace. Mercy. Asking that the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us commend ourselves and each other in all our life unto Christ our God. sanctification and unto thee we ascribe glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever 
and unto ages of ages. Let us depart in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, who blessed those who bless thee and sanctify us, those who trust in thee, save thy people and bless thine inheritance, preserve the fullness of thy church, sanctify those of the being of thy house, glorify them by thy divine power and forsake us not to put our hope in thee. Give peace to thy world, to thy churches, to thy priests, to all those in civil authority and to all thy people. For every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from thee, the Father of lights. And unto thee we ascribe glory, thanksgiving, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. to the Lord. O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, who didst bless the five loaves in the wilderness and therefrom didst feed the five thousand, do thou the same Lord bless these loaves, wine, figs, and dates, and sanctify all the faithful who shall partake of them. For it is thou, Christ, our God, who dost bless and sanctify all things, and unto thee we ascribe glory. With the Father, who hath no beginning in thine all holy, good, and light, creating spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Blessed be the name of the Lord as for this forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord as for this forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord as for this forevermore. The blessing of the Lord be upon you for his grace and love towards mankind always, now and ever. And unto ages of ages. Glory to thee, O Christ our God, and our sure hope. Glory to thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory and mercy, glory and mercy, glory and mercy. Christ, our true God, through the prayers of his most pure mother, the holy, glorious, and laudable apostles, the power of the precious and light creating cross of our Father among the saints, John Basil the Great, Archbishop of Caesarea and Cappadocia, whose liturgy we celebrate today, of our Father among the saints, Nicholas the Wonder Worker, Archbishop Miriam Lycia, the patron of this holy temple, all the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, for as much as he is good, and loves mankind. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Lord forever. I really, I really want to say three other words. Um, and you know what they are, and we'll get to say them soon enough. But just to give the, the server some time, you know it is our tradition uh, this evening to follow what the guidelines of the church say about blessing loaves, wine, figs, and dates. Um, and it would be the custom of those in the early church who stayed to celebrate the resurrection to take that as sustenance until the time uh, that they got to celebrate the resurrection. Um, I know that you have places to go and things to do and, and things to prepare, so I won't tell you that you have to stay here in church, but I will invite you to have a measured cup of wine, uh, a piece of bread, and either some figs or some dates. Don't take both, because then somebody at the end of the line may not get one. But, uh, um, so you're welcome to do that. I would, if you could, ask you to give us maybe a few minutes after the service, after that happens, um, because you know it's also our tradition, uh, an unfortunate tradition, but, but it must be done um, to distribute the Paschal flowers to their Paschal positions before the midnight service this evening. I think Patty's here and she has a plan. She told me she has a plan. So if you pick a plant, she'll tell you where it goes 
and then hopefully we'll get there. Um, we also then need the, the portions of the, the flower stands um, at least pour, put somewhere in the back where either I can get them downstairs or if some of you can stay to put them back by the, by the boiler room entrance um, back there, um, I can get them to where they need to go from there. Uh, maybe run the vacuum because it will be a little bit flowery after uh, and just help to prepare those things. Um, it would be a great blessing for us if you could stay uh, and do that. Uh, it's good to have so many of you here. Um, uh, it is the feeling in our house that Pascha will always be Pascha, but this liturgy uh, is you know, the first announcement of the resurrection. That's why you end it, you want to say, Christ is, you know. Um, and we will get to say that uh, this evening. Uh, it's good to welcome Father Michael and the Soroka and, and the Zahirsky crew with us. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it's unfortunate, Father Michael, uh, that we get, we get older. And when we get older, it becomes more difficult for us. Uh, know that the altar here misses you, uh, but we understand uh, and uh, are glad that you're here with us, with your family. Um, I, again, I apologize in advance because we're in two buildings this evening, uh, but that's just uh, the part of following the protocols for, for the pandemic. Um, and uh, I don't think it will lessen our, our celebration. Um, I did send out an email um, to those people who registered for the service saying where to go, so which building, you, you, sh you should get that email, it'll either say church or the hall. Um, if you're listening online or you're here and you're bringing a basket to bless this evening, leave it in the car. Um, even though there's a freeze warning this evening, I will go outside and we will bless baskets by your vehicles because we're just not uh, prepared or able to have an agape meal inside. Uh, if you want, I have a fire ring at the house. We can put it out in the grass and you can, you can eat with us um, in the cold. <laughs> um, we can pretend we're Eskimos. Uh, but uh, but um, it is good to have you with us. Um, Christ will be risen soon. Hell is shaking at this moment. Uh, uh, the darkness is coming, but the light will overtake it. I guarantee it. So uh, God bless you. Again, um, I think... I don't know. They got lost. Maybe David drank the wine and, and ate the bread. Um, we'll put it out on the table over here. You can venerate the, the plush and, a, and go that way if you would. Um, there are uh, garbage cans throughout. Um, leave the cup and the, and the container for the figs if you don't take it home in one of the trash cans there. God bless you. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us. Master. 